Okay, so, so maybe we should get started. I think we've got a ver very interesting conversation. Um, I think hearing from the pharma community is really important because it provides context of who's going to be using innovation, how do we actually get it on farms. But we're gonna go shift from my perspective to the opposite end now, and we're gonna talk about from more of the entrepreneurial side, how do we actually get things to happen and move from that perspective to see success around innovation. So um, I, for those who don't know me, I'm Adam Bergman. I'm a managing director at Citi. I am a, the global head of ag tech investment banking. And, and I like to tell people I work from farm to fork, but I don't cover traditional food or traditional ag companies. I cover all the technology companies that are disrupting the ag sector. And, and today, we actually have a, a, a really special guest here and PJ Amini, and, and PJ, and I'll let PJ give a little of his background, is to me leading one of the things that I think is really important. If we're talking about an innovation, one of the challenges we often face is people look at things very differently. People try to pursue innovation in different ways. And one of the challenges we often face is we get to the end and yet things have been done in different ways and it's really difficult to evaluate innovation and how successful it is, and to go from that next day of, from, okay, we've come up with something, to actually say, well, how does it get tested? How does it get validated? And how do we make sure it's working properly? Because if we can't get the innovations to the point of being successful and then getting on the farm to be used, we're not gonna be making progress in ag tech. So with that, PJ, why don't I turn to you, why don't you give a little bit of your own background, and why don't you tell us about the playbook? Sounds good, thank you, Adam. Uh, Context-wise, I'll start at the same place that uh, Max started earlier. I did not start my, my life on a family farm. Uh, I started as a kid in Los Angeles, of all places. But at the age of eight, we moved to Elbert County, Georgia. And my first job was at 13, where my family worked in the granite mining industry. And after one summer working with my family, I decided to move into agriculture. And so that was my, my kind of shift into the industry. Um, so, you know, since then, my whole career has been in agriculture. I did research for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Monsanto, and subsequently Bayer. Uh, and now I work for a team called Leaps by Bayer, which is the venture capital arm of the broader Bayer company that, that we all know well. Um, and our job on the day in, day out is to look at these innovations, to look at what's coming out for new technologies for the farm, to make farmers more efficient, to deliver that productivity that we keep talking about and to do it in a way that's better all the way around. So better for the land, better economically for the farmer, um, and great economically, hopefully, for the companies that are developing these technologies too. That's a very hard balance. And if you were to ask for a list of the technologies and the companies that have done that, it's a shockingly short list today, unfortunately, is. Uh, is the truth. Uh, it's why conversations like the one we just had become super critical, because the conversation that uh, was coming up around, we're at you know, $4 corn right now uh, on a bushel. And it's very hard to say, hey, I want you to come try this unknown technology on your farm now that may hurt or may help. We're going to tell you it's going to help, but we're not quite sure. <laughs> and ask someone to adopt that technology when so much is already at stake and there's not mm -hmm. a lot of profit margin to be had, if any at all. So what we saw when we were coming into this industry was that there's two big issues in ag tech that doesn't exist mm. in other kind of innovation ecosystems. Um, and this came from looking at healthcare. So for any of you that have looked at that industry before, big pharmaceutical industry and how they develop products, um, they also develop long, long periods of R&D. So it takes me 10 to 12 years to develop a new medicine. Yep. It's very cost prohibitive. It takes about a billion to $2 billion to, to create a new medicine on average. Um, and, and one thing that they have that we don't necessarily have in ag is this roadmap of exactly what it takes to get there. I was at an actual healthcare conference kind of sitting in and playing spy for a little bit the other day. Um, and every meeting I was in between an investor and an entrepreneur shared the same nomenclature. Everyone knew what it meant to be testing in a mouse model. Everyone knew what it meant to be doing an IND submission, what it meant to do a phase one trial, clinical trial. And so everyone spoke with the same nomenclature. And if we step back and we step into agriculture and we say, okay, what does phase one testing mean for a crop protection product? What does phase one testing mean for a new biological? I don't think we have a shared nomenclature or understanding of that at all. 
If you step outside the walls of a couple of the, the big ag companies, we each have our own kind of internal definitions. We unfortunately don't share that same understanding. And we also have this second degree problem, which is let's say we all understood and we all had that same nomenclature and we all accepted that it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of money to bring a product to market in agriculture. We have the second order problem of once I develop it, we have what you know, I would call a reverse field of dreams situation. So you can build it, but the market doesn't necessarily come. And so if you haven't worked with uh, farmers, if you haven't worked with the United Soybean Board, if you haven't worked with National Corn Growers Association, if you haven't worked with trusted uh, retailers or large agricultural companies, it's hard to get your product to market. It's super costly, it's expensive. If I'm in healthcare and I develop a brand new drug and it took me $2 billion, the good news for me is I have a monopoly now. That's the best drug out there, every hospital wants it. That's not the case in agriculture. So we have to do this together as an ecosystem. And even as an investor in many companies at this point in time, no company in my portfolio have I ever brought to bear as a broader partnership company and said, look, here's all the data. It, is this good enough for us to want to adopt and kind of partner and go to market? I promise you, Bayer, as well as BASF, as well as Syngenta, as well as any other big ad company is going to tell you, not until we test it together for another year or two, right? And so we have this issue, and it came up in the farmer panel of trust. And it's trust with the farmer, and it's trust with the partners for how we're going to go to market. And so the playbook and where this uh, originated from it's really to solve the first half of this problem. We're not gonna to try to solve everything in one go, but the first half of this problem is trying to develop that nomenclature and understanding of how long it takes to get to market. What do phases generally look like? And what do I need to do from a planning perspective so I can test in the right way with the right people in the right ecosystem to actually have success of bringing these new products to the farm that can help us all out. And I think it's really important because, again, I think you mentioned healthcare, and I started my career years ago in the, in the healthcare side, and, and really when biotech was beginning. And, and to look at where the biotech sector is today, it, it's, it's changed dramatically. And you talk about the capital goes in, but, but there's an, an exit. And, and, and you, didn't, you didn't use that word as strongly, but, but I guess as a banker, it, it's in my lexicon to use the word exit. And, and, one of the things I think we see with a lot of these entrepreneurial companies starting out is we're not seeing exits because the companies are not getting to the level of development where buyers want them. Bayer's not saying they're going, wow, we need this, this product the same way you see the big drug companies all of a sudden doing things. And, and, and you've seen it recently. There was, I think, um, Novo Nordis did another deal this week. And, and the amount of activity around new drugs is tremendous, and we're just not seeing that on the agriculture side. And, and I think one of the things you mentioned that I talk about all the time is how do we put ourselves in a position to get to market? And, and that's one of the things that I actually think this sector is, is really challenged by. And if you look at most of the companies that are struggling, I would say, well, maybe there's a product challenge, most of it is they just can't get to market. And, and, and even if you show a product works, how many years is it going to take to get on a significant amount of that farm? Because you're going to start off year one, and you're going to be in a small corner. And if you prove yourself out, you'll get in a bigger piece. And then after time, you'll get there. So, so when you think about the playbook, why, why don't you tell us a little bit about the types of people you're working with? And, and, and really, how do you go from what I think today is an exciting unveiling to kind of that next step of, of how we get the, this sector to, to start to gain some momentum behind this? Yeah, so um, the first step here is kind of creating that, that, that same level of nomenclature, right? So to do that, you have to pull uh, not just one voice, but the voices of many to kind of get that shared understanding, right? So luckily, I've got a couple of uh, the reviewers uh, and editors of the playbook here in the room. So one, thank you to those of you who've offered your time to, to do that. Um, full transparency, you guys are getting an early look at this. This playbook will come out in the next three to four weeks, and that's kind of the timeline we're looking at to finally release it. The first chapter will talk about crop protection technologies and the time it takes to, to bring that forward. Um, but in this, we have editors from uh, a number of the big ag companies, including uh, a couple of former CSOs of the big ag companies who've brought hundreds of products to market at this point in time, uh, a couple of entrepreneurs who are actively working through this right now and learning that, those lessons the, the hard way, 
Um, and then some other uh, kind of innovators who've worked more on a research capacity uh, who've done different phases of this but haven't maybe seen the whole picture. So we wanted all these different perspectives to come into this review cycle so that we could all look at this and say this becomes the same kind of nomenclature that we all use. Um, the, the aspect of releasing this and the hope longer term, and this is what Adam was talking about uh, uh, a second ago, is we've got one claimed billion dollar exit in, in ag, and that's in the digital space, so that's not even in the, <laughs> the, the input market space. Yep. Um, we finally are seeing a couple of products, and I'm gonna use crop protection as the example here. Uh, we do see a couple of products finally making their way to market, but let me use a couple of examples here. So Vesteron on, on the peptide front, um, and let's look at uh, uh, Greenlight Bio uh, as well on its RNAi uh, front and what it's bringing to market. Both of those companies came out, they raised money, they one went public uh, and then had to come, subsequently come private. So what that means is a lot of those early investors did not make any money on doing that. Nope. And there was a long hard path to develop that. And it took each one of these companies more than eight or nine years to kind of develop to get out to this point in time. Which means if you look at the standard venture capital cycle, a venture capital uh, firm generally has a 10 year payback period. That means if I have $100 million to invest, I'm expecting to return at minimum that $100 million back to the people who gave it to me. Well, if it takes a company nine years to develop a product or even longer, that means you're only gonna start generating revenue at year 10 or 11, which means you likely don't see a return for that for a much longer period. There's an asymmetry between the payback period in agricultural technology as well as the, the time you wanna get a payback. So you know, this might be a semi-controversial statement, yeah, but yeah. it begs the question, is venture capital the right funding model the way it exists today for ag? I would argue no, until we can accomplish the same type of understanding that we have in pharma and yeah. I was gonna. I was gonna say, if that is a controversial statement, yeah. then I'm in trouble because I've been saying it for, uh, for for thanks for for a very long time. Because I, I actually don't think venture capital is the right model for most of ag tech. I, I just I and and I am someone who spent 20 years doing clean tech sustainability, and I started doing it in solar in 05, and it wasn't the model for solar, and it's not the model for electric vehicles. And it hasn't shown to be a model for, for ag tech. So I don't, I, if it's controversial, then, then you and I are controversial because right. we're on the same page. Oh, and it's me putting my own job at risk since <laughs> I work in that space. <laughs> uh, um, well, I, actually, if it's fair enough, I might reverse the question back to you, right? Sure. We, we, we both played in this industry a fair amount of time. Adam, you worked in the climate investing area and banking spot for a long time. I mean, is this the first idea like this that you've yeah. seen out here? Have you seen other versions of the playbook? I'm curious for feedback, and I'm curious yeah. for feedback from the audience yeah. as well. So, so as we were talking, and, and uh, PJ was telling me about the playbook, it, it, it harkened me back to about a decade ago, um, or it was probably less than that, it was probably six or eight years ago. Um, I was at Wells Fargo, who was one of the largest players in financing solar and wind projects. and, and one of the, the people who were behind really the engineering and the technical side of giving approval to those projects developed something called the orange button. And I, I can't give you a sense of why it was called the orange button, but it was called the orange button, which, which was similar to the playbook, which was they were finding it incredibly challenging that every time they looked at a new solar or wind project, the information provided was different and it was given to them in different ways, and they found it so challenging to evaluate it because everyone was providing different information that they would need to figure out how to put it in a way that was easily accessible and they could evaluate it against other projects. So they came in and they put this orange button, as they called it together, which was a way that everyone, and, and, and to, to credit, just a, as PJ is doing, even though he's, He's trying to broaden it for everyone. Wells did it for the whole sector and just said, look, if you want to do a, a project, and they brought other banks in and, and other players in the industry, this is a form you need to fill out. You need to put it, all the information in there that's going to be the same, and then we'll be able to evaluate it. And, and it really helped streamline projects, and I think it made the ability to do a new solar wind project, the time horizon get cut down, and, and, and I think as you've outlined here, 
standardization in any industry just, just makes sense. And, and I, I think for some reason, ag just tries to do stuff differently and often harder. It, 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 and there's no reason. We, we should be able to put this in a way that's very straightforward in terms of a roadmap. And, and, and we need a roadmap here. To, to, to PJ's comments, getting a new crop input product to market, getting it on the farm is difficult enough. If the process of how it is going to be put forward is different, making each evaluation you do more challenging because there's no standardization, you're just adding years to it. And, and, and so if, if our outcome is to take new innovations and get them to a farm quicker, any type of standardization probably will be more beneficial because it's going to be helpful for companies like Bayer and BASF and Syngenta to understand it. And hopefully it's going to be easier then for the end user, the farmer, to sit there and say, OK, we've got another proposal. I can look at it compared to X that we've done in the past and say how it's worked, how it's performed. It, it just is going to make it easier. When, when I, I always talk about there's a friction out there, it, it, particularly in ag. If you make something more, if you make something not easy, everyone is inclined to decide, let's not use it. it, it there's always a good ability to say, you know what, for X, Y, or Z, it just doesn't make sense. Right. If you make it very easy and very straightforward, it takes one of those challenges away because people can't sit there and say, well, that's too difficult, or I can't determine X, Y, or Z. So, so to me, standardization, having all the information out there is, is going to be important. I think, to me, the challenge, in some sense, one faces is everything you're doing is fantastic. And the question is going to be, how do we get the rest of the industry on board? And, 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 I'll, and I'll throw that back to you. How, how are you pursuing that? And how, how do we get the industry on board? Well, th this is the great start right now, right? So we've had a great partnership here with um, the REITS Coalition, who has many of the big players in mm -hmm. agriculture here at the table, both on the farming side, the input side, the processing side, the CPG side, and all the way through to our end consumer. Um, so this is a great cohort to start with. And I think we only have to expand it th thereafter, right? The one thing I expect to be true when the playbook gets published is that there should be a long list of people who find fault with it and things that can improve with it. And that's forever the changing in our industry. Yep. Regulatory policy will change and need to be updated. Yep. The way we test is going to change and be updated over time. And this should be an evergreen thing. So it's how we can work together uh, with folks like the REACH Coalition uh, and others across the industry to keep this evergreen and continue to make that uh, something that evolves with our industry and only improves over time. And so uh, we're lucky that we've got great reviewers from across um, the world, actually, at this point in time. Um, but that's going to have to continue. And this first chapter is crop protection, right? Why did we start there? It's what I felt most comfortable starting with, having a long career in developing crop protection technologies. Um, in one of our early REACH Coalition meetings, so that's where, where's the animal ag chapter? Mm -hmm. I was like, well, it sounds right. like someone's volunteering to write the animal ag yeah. chapter and bring yeah. products to, to market. Yeah. And so we look forward to adding each one of these chapters in. But hopefully this framework applies to animal ag, applies to digital ag solutions, mm -hmm. and these different various solutions we need on the farm, yeah. um, hopefully bringing some of that standardization. So, so we've got a group out here who, who looks yeah. excited. Okay, I was just I was just my last my last comment was just going to be, can you can you give us a sense yeah. of how people can get involved? Yeah, yeah, you you guys are all here through Reach, right? So you know who to reach out to about that. You also have my information associated with it. Contact us. We're happy to pull in as many brains as possible on this. This is not meant to be a one or two person mm. show at all. It only benefits all of us if we work on this together and create this shared nomenclature. Excellent. So did you want to talk, or are we? Or nah, that we talked through it. Okay. There's pictures up here if you like pictures. Okay. Of a well, sur well, surfer I, for some reason. Well, well, th I appreciate you thanking, uh, help, uh, helping me thank PJ for this and all his hard work, because this is going to be uh, a potential game-changing uh, way to help move this sector forward to, as I would always say, positive outcomes for companies. 
Because if we get positive outcomes for companies, we're going to get more investors coming in, and it's going to be um, a positive cycle going forward because people who make money investing into ag tech will come back. They will bring their investing friends, and, and we can helpfully get a lot of these solutions implemented going forward. So thank you very much. We appreciate it, PJ. Sure. Thank you. Yes. Okay.